Now, hear what some of America's greatest heroes and leaders have to say. Colonel Mitchell Page was the last Marine standing after repulsing a Japanese regiment on Guadalcanal. We all know that this was in international waters. It was an unprovoked, intentional attack on a U.S. vessel with one objective, to sink it and kill all aboard. Unprovoked attack. I think it was dastardly. I think it was a betrayal of any friendship that we may have had with that nation. And I think that it should be exposed to the entire world and all brought out so that the whole world would know the actual truth about that, that particular day in 1967. And very widely you could see this was an American ship. And not only did the Israelis attack it, they did this with their Army, Navy, and Air Force. Though badly wounded, Navy Master Chief Bob Bush held off a Japanese advance while saving his commanding officer's life. You know, it's, it's impossible for me to figure out why maybe I would sit here and attack you when we're friends. I mean, we're, they're, get, they're getting our money to buy those French airplanes. And then they turn around and attack our ship when they can see that it's our ship. It's absolutely uncalled for. Army Colonel Lou Millet led the last bayonet charge against vastly superior Chinese forces in Korea. I was in the World War II. I studied all the different types of aircraft so that when I shot at a plane, I made sure I shouldn't hit the enemy and not out. They know what those ships look like, and if they don't, I can't conceive that they don't know. I do know this. It was a criminal act. It was an act of war. It's as bad as Vietnam, allowing people to who would try to save people from tyranny to die for nothing. Admiral Thomas Moore is the longest serving active four-star admiral in American history. He is the only American admiral to have commanded both the Atlantic and Pacific fleets. He was head of NATO forces, served as chief of naval operations, and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for two terms. The Navy's chief fighter, the F-14 Tomcat, was named after Admiral Tom Moore. The question is, uh, if the uh, Israelis uh, thought the, the frequencies they jammed were in fact uh, broadcast by the Egyptian ship, uh, why did they uh, uh, jam the American frequencies? There's no question about the fact that the jamming of the Liberty frequencies was deliberate. and. Uh, uh, was undoubtedly ordered by high authority. Since uh, a large uh, part of the caches were uh, caused by torpedo boats, could have been uh, uh, prevented from uh, making those attacks uh, by the aircraft that were on their way to help when they were recalled. Admiral Arlie Burke was known as Mr. Navy. His long and illustrious career was capped by him becoming the Chief of Naval Operations. The high-tech modern American Navy destroyers were named the Arleigh E. Burke class of destroyer. I don't know yet why we didn't protect that ship. I don't know why the Israelis would take such terrific chances it must have been something that was very important to them to decide to attack without considering the probability of war. Recuperating from serious throat surgery, the Saratoga skipper Joe Tully spoke about the launch and recall of protective aircraft. I had launch ready at that time, 12 aircraft, conventionally armed, and I immediately launched and to my surprise, the Americans did not launch. About the same time, uh, a message came from um, Rear Admiral Larry Geis, who was the carrier division commander, and who was not the officer in tactical command, but who was senior to me, who had somehow been given tactical command, or assumed it, ordering the strike aircraft to return to Saratoga. 